my life journey, which I believe is is very connected to what I do, uh, actually more than ever before right now, uh, began around 33 years ago. I was born in uh, Nyeri, uh, Mount Kenya people are in the house. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so I was born, um, you know, in a rural village, uh, and I only moved to Nairobi when I was around four years old. And the reason my family moved here is because um, at the age of two weeks, I was actually diagnosed with osteogenesis imperfecta. And that's a disease of brittle bones, meaning that your bones break um, for no apparent reason. They just break. Um, and my family had a history of disability. I have two other siblings who had uh, similar disabilities. So, so imagine more than 30 years back in the village, in a family where you have three kids uh, with disabilities. Um, and, you know, I usually say that um, uh, our forefathers, the founders of this nation, they used to say that they were fighting or they were leading Kenya to address three things. One of them is disease. The other one is ignorance. And the other one is poverty. Now, on the issue of ignorance, when it comes to disability, there's a lot of ignorance. Uh, and this ignorance is driven by attitudes, uh, you know, cultural norms or backgrounds, and even, you know, just lack of uh, information. So you can imagine the stigma uh, in, in a village setup where you have a family and all of a sudden three kids are, have disabilities and nobody knows, you know, what's up with them. So in a nutshell, uh, I remember my, my mom told me that my first Christmas, I actually spent it in the hospital. Uh, it's because I had these fractures and yeah, the only way they knew how to treat them is to put a plaster on you and hope you'll get uh, better and send you home. But this kept happening again and again and again. Uh, and as a result, uh, of course, um, I got the disability which I have now, which is a shortened uh, right limb. Um, but the moral of the story is just to tell you where I came from and to show you the connection to where I am. So um, moving to Nairobi, of course, in the city, you get better health care. And, um, you know, these conditions can be managed. Uh, so I, I was lucky to get treated surgically and to embark on what I would think was an ordinary life. You know, however, getting into school for me was very difficult. Actually, I think I began uh, kindergarten around seven, eight years old. And the reason is not because I could not learn. It's because the education system was not equipped. And so schools felt like, you know, you're too delicate. We don't want anything to do with you. Or they simply, um, you know, did not have the right uh, attitude. Some of them actually questions my, questioned my abilities. Uh, but luckily, I, I did manage to get into school. And I went to a special school in Thika called Joytown, uh, which you know is one of the few integrated schools now in Kenya where persons with disability learn with others. Although at that time it was purely for persons or kids with disabilities, and there is where I really got my training in life. And the training that I got is to be independent or self-reliant, because in that setup, you know, uh, there is no pity. Everyone has their own issues, so. It's a, it was actually, for me, a training ground to who I became. And literally, by a very young age, I was a very independent kid. Um, you can imagine uh, having gone to boarding school from kindergarten to class eight, uh, meaning that I spent more time in school than at home. And because of that, then I, um, I'm actually accused today that I never feel homesick, I never call home. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, it's an effect of what I went through. Uh, however, I realized something when I was there is that, you see, uh, the, the the potential of a human being is is so huge. And that's why when we all die, you've literally just scratched the surface. So I I developed an attitude from a very young age of always going beyond myself, of always wanting to challenge the norm. And because of that, when I was in class eight, I told my parents, I'm not going to a special school anymore. Uh, so you have to get me into a regular school so that I can prove to these guys that they, they don't have anything on me. 
uh, and just remember the story of how difficult it was to get into schools. And we challenged that, and luckily enough, I got into a high school in Nairobi called Aquinas High School. And I got into that school by a very interesting uh, circumstances. One of the teachers there had actually seen me on TV when I was in primary school. Uh, I used to do public speaking and singing and all those things. So that is what got me my ticket to high school. Um, and of course, I, uh, I did excel. Uh, in fact, not only did I manage to get into the most prestigious university in this country, um, I also ended up leading the most successful university-based incubators in Kenya. And from a professional perspective, I've always worked with entrepreneurs or people who want to challenge the norm, people who want to make a difference. And that changed also how I think about things. So I ran uh, IBIS Africa for four and a half years. And literally the last day I left IBIS, I handed over an award to my director. Uh, and we had just won, um, you know, an, an award for the most, um, um, I think the most, uh, the best youth employment strategy uh, in the country in, in, um, in the DR Awards, which is a diversity and inclusion uh, award in Kenya. But why did I leave? I, leave, I left because... Um, at some point in my life, I came across uh, people from the Global Disability Innovation Hub, and they told me what they were doing. And then um, initially, they had just told me to share with them what I thought about the concepts, you know, my thoughts about tackling disability, stigma, and assistive technology, which I gave them a lot of feedback. But eventually, they told me, would you work for us? Um, you have a strong background in entrepreneurship. Uh, and a very strong professional CV. And for me, it was a no-brainer. I had to kind of almost thank God because how, how many times in your life do you get to work in an area where it's not only professional, but it's personal? So what we are doing, uh, we are trying to establish an innovation ecosystem around assistive technology, meaning that we want to give persons with disability uh, unlimited potential. What, when you see here, when you see me with my crutches here, or you see somebody with a wheelchair, uh, that is a very important thing to them because it literally enables them to be at the same level playing ground with you. So globally, we have one billion people that do not have access to affordable and quality assistive technology, and this is backed by research. In Africa, it's more than three hundred million people, um, and the the biggest challenge around innovating in this sector is also there's very little data, reliable data. It literally could be more. Um, so we are tackling this uh, head on and we are not doing it alone. We are building an ecosystem. And so right now we have literally launched Africa's first ever assistive technology innovation ecosystem here in Kenya. And what we want to do is over the next uh, couple of years, say three years, is to show that this can be as exciting as fintech or whatever other um, area that you think startups are excelling. And this can make a huge difference in people's lives. And I'm, I'm really happy that my experience and my work is really to give back in an area that means something. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.